Aloha. Good morning. I am Roy Nakamura, President of Financial Accountability for Rail Mass Transit Association. The Financial Accountability for Rail Mass Transit Association is a registered State of Hawaii nonprofit association. I am testifying against Bill 42 CD1 Resolution 18 127 CD1 Resolution 18 132 CD1 Resolution 18 237 and Resolution 239 CD1. Now, any action taken by the City Council is premature until the state financial audit is completed and evaluated and the results are released. The FTA is not requesting additional $44 million as desired by Mayor Cod Kurt Caldwell and Hart through Bill 42 CD1. What the FTA wants is clarification of Hart's $44 million as listed in the recovery plan of the September 15, 2017. Kill Bill 42 CD1 and a company resolution. Our association requests that the city and HUD delay taking actions on Bill 42 CD1 and a company resolution until HUD submit its new recovery plan requested by the FTA by November 20th, 2018. The State of Hawaii Legislature Review Financial Audit per Act 1 take action by mid February 2019. In the 2019 State of Hawaii Legislative Session, the public wants to review and to speak out on the state financial audit through public hearing. Thank you and mahalo. Aloha. I am Rod Tam, former state representative, state senator, and former state, city and county uh, councilman. I wish to give uh, information in terms of what is happening on the city's rail. Right now there's a lot of deception going on and I'd like to read the script that I have written because of the technicality of what I'm going to say. Keep in mind when we talk about the rail, we're talking about Mayor Kirk Cardwell's administration along with the Honolulu Authority for Rapid Transportation, which is otherwise known as HART, H-A-R-T. And they, what they did is they wrongfully created political deception in legislating the use of city bonds for the construction of cities steel on steel rail. Bill 42, CD2, which is the legislation that the administration created, is wrong, was wrong wrongfully in financing the city administration overpriced mass transit system known as the steel and steel rail bill 42 cd2 allowed one mayor kirk cardwell and hart to cash bonds debt bonds for the rail construction to commingle city funds into the rail construction and other rail expenses and three the bond debt of 44 million dollars plus interest and commission expenses is to be paid off by increasing property taxes on homeowners, businesses, and etc. The reasons why there was deception are one, the legislation violates City and County of Honolulu Ordinance 07-001. The audience stated the city's mass transit systems, capital costs, and any interest to finance the capital costs shall be paid entirely, yes entirely, from the state of Hawaii's general excise and use tax surcharge revenues. As a former city councilman, along with State Senator Ron Minor, who is now a councilman of the state of Hawaii, the state of Hawaii and the city county of Honolulu contracted agreement on the financing of the city's bill. 
To break the contract means that the state of Hawaii can now deny or de yeah, deny to fund the city's rail immediately. Two, the legislation will commit debt on the city's residents and taxpayers now and for future generations. The city already has existing debts which the city is unable to pay off for years into the future. Technically, for the city to now pay off existing city debt, our city would be in bankruptcy. The city has overused its credit, just like many charge card holders. Three, Mayor Codwell and Hart wrongfully and deceptively padded the rail budget to Bill 42 CD2 by interpreting the Federal Administration, otherwise known as FTA, letters of September 21st, 2000. 18 and October 26, 2018, in demanding the city to add $44 million in bonds to the rail construction budget. In truth, the FTA only requested for commitment, which means identify and, and implement the $44 million stated in the city and county of Honolulu's September 15, 2017 recovery plan by Mayor Kirk Caldwell and Hart. The legislation of Bill 42, CD2 added an additional 42 million, not needed to the two, 2018 to 2019 fiscal year captive improvement project budget for the rail, which was adopted prior to the introduction of Bill 42, CD2. Mayor Kirk Caldwell and Hart should have disclosed initially in the September 15, 2017 recovery plan report that the $44 million funds is coming from the state of Hawaii's revenues and to be expended on the construction costs of the city's rail. The state of Hawaii had committed for years now to fund the city's rail to the half percent general excise tax to 2030 and the one percent transit accommodation tax from 2017 to 2030. The FTA had also previously committed to a full funding grant agreement in 2012, 1.55 billion of which is the FTA has released $806 million with a balance of $744 million to be released pending harsh financial accountability of expenses. The cashing of the $44 million in debt bonds in Bill 42 CD2 in reality is Mayor Codwell's slush funds. Government prohibits budget, budgets of public funds to be slush funds. 5. Bill 42 CD2 wrongfully legislates $44 million from the city's general fund to be used for the construction of the 20-mile city rail. Using general funds is not a good practice. General funds is for funding city services, that of health and safety, and daily operational expenses. And six, the state of Hawaii's state auditor is conducting an audit on the city's rail per Act 1 of 2017. The audit will be released to the state legislature in the end of December 2018, at which time the legislature will review the audit to public hearings and may do further legislation on the city's rail. If no vote on Bill 42 CD2 would have prevented property tax being increased to pay unnecessary debt and sends a strong message to the state legislature and Governor David Ige that the city and county of Honolulu taxpayers need state of Hawaii's government financing for the rail. A yes vote tells the legislators and governor state revenues are not needed, which would result in the city funding rail itself and going bankrupt. Although Bill 42 CD2 was signed into law, the citizens of the state of Hawaii and the city county of Honolulu can deter Mayor Kirk Caldwell from the cashing of the bonds by speaking out. Thank you. Hello, my name is um, Kelvin Hulehe. I'm a resident of Hawaii, a taxpayer, and I'm also a member of the Financial 
uh, accountability for real. And uh, I just want to express my view of what we're going through, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Representative Tom, Senator Tom, Ron Tam, I mean, Mr. Ron Tam, he explained mostly everything what I can possibly say anymore. But I want to tell you my, just my point of view of what this, this thing is going on. Okay? What I experienced when I went to uh, Wednesday's meeting. The expand of city bonds borrowed by money for rail transit construction, which results in increased taxpayers' debt. It seems like a Ponzi scheme. And even um, Aunt, Mr. Mrs. Ann uh, Kobayashi, she, she mentioned, it's just like borrowing money from Peter to pay Paul, resulting in more disaster in debts, causes increase in city property taxes, which Mr. Caldwell promised that he was never going to touch the city property taxes. But anyway, taxes to be Taxes pay, pay taxpayers' debt. It enables Mayor Cardwell, Cardwell to commingle city funds to pay for the over-budgeted rail construction. And I just want to say last for the best. This rail, this government is all collusion with this construction and this money operations and commingle with all these people and they're not being um, telling the public the honest thing of, of showing the sunshine law, showing the audit, showing the, the basic of doing construction, showing the basic process of how much it's going to cost, what the tax is going to appear and where every dollar is being spent. That's the main idea we, I want to get. I asked, that's the basic I can tell you. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Aloha. My name is Barbara Hudman, a lifetime resident of the island of Oahu. Being involved in our group, Financial Associate uh, Accountability, excuse me, for the rail mass transit and being exposed to major issues of the past directly related to the impact of the passage of Bill 42, this poem came to mind. The sky above, what little there is left of it to see. The potholes below, the trash in our sewers that ends up out into the sea. Concrete, graft, greed and corruption surround us. Oh wait, where is our Hawaii going? Mahalo. <laughs> I, just, I, know, I know I forgot. Good, good, good day. day. Uh, good day. My name is Elaine Cam. And I am a mother, grandmother, tutor, caregiver, um, library user, and community volunteer. Um, what has been happening here since they passed that uh, Bill 42, which involves uh, property tax and a few other um, additional taxes, has caused me a lot of heartache. I do not want to see our um, citizens, our local citizens, moving out at the rate that they are moving. And um, I feel that we do need financial accountability, and that's why I joined this group. It is called the um, Financial Accountability for Rail Mass Transit Association. We do need uh, an audit, a forensic, a uh, comprehensive audit, and which will probably mean a forensic audit. And um, in the back of this, I think that it all started because, for instance, our um, Daniel Inouye, who is our congressperson. Um, he had something to do with it. And former Governor Linda Lingo, as well as former Go uh, Mayor Mufi Hanneman, and former Mayor Peter Carlisle, and now present um, Kurt, Mayor Kurt Caldwell, 
have all had a little bit to do, or maybe more than a little bit, to um, cause this uh, ruckus and uh, great despair our people are facing today because of this um, overburdened tax um, responsibility that all of us are suffering from. And um, I hope that um, somehow we would um, reveal, as Mr. Tam said, that the FTA um, did not really ask for money, more money, that $44 um, million. All we wanted to know is where is it, because we had spoken about it. And I think it's in a safe place, probably in a bank, okay? Just the status alone, I think, uh, hopefully would help that. We don't have to go and get into all these bonds and things in which we're going to have to um, give uh, so much money, our credit card and our blank checks, just to pay for that. That's very unhealthy as far as an older person like myself is concerned. And um, I did want very much to say um, thank you for listening and aloha. Good. Very good. Uh, yeah. My name is Charles Corral. Um, I'm a member of the Financial Accountability Association. And I'm also a, a long-time taxpayer. And I'm concerned that we are giving money to rail every once, every two or three week, every two or three month, uh, years, and yet we don't know how they're spending it. We don't know how much they have now uh, for the uh, rail, and so it's important that there be a financial order, order. Done by the state auditor, as required under 2007 Act One, and it's important that this that this person is given the authority to get this information, and the hot people are not giving it to him, and that uh, I really believe that when he gives his report in December. He's going to say, I just was not able to get the information. And therefore, please, I want the, either the state or the city, maybe even the federal government, to make them give the information of how they're spending the money and what's left of, of the money. And that's my main thing. Thank you very much. I am Frank Gennadio, a strong supporter of rail a decade ago, but a constant critic since because of a lack of open competition, continuous delays, and cost overruns. In 2017, I testified against the Senate bill that became Act One. I was opposed because I believed that the estimated $6.8 billion budget would have been sufficient to complete the 20-mile minimum operable segment, or MOS approved by the Honolulu City Council in the Rail Enabling Legislation of 2006. To do so, however, would require conversion of the Steel Wheels Guideway to employ urban magnetic levitation. With the passage of Act 1, the Hart estimate for collections through 2030 is now $9.3 billion, and that is just to complete the MOS. We can and must do better. Along with the financial bailout for the rail project, Act 1 also called for the state audit that is ongoing. Act 1 additionally called for identifying, and I quote, alternative routes and development options and the projected costs for each alternative route and development option for the Middle Street to Alamoana segment of the Honolulu Rail Transit Project, end quote. Let me describe what can actually be done with a fixed kitty of $9.3 billion and not one dollar more. First, American-designed Maglev 2000 technology can emplace panels between the tracks of the existing guideway 
that will not only enable the use of magnetically levitated vehicles, but also allow use of the Hitachi Italy Steel Wheels four car trains if conversion begins at the 12 mile point, probably reached next year, those trains, as well as maglev systems, can provide service from East Kapolei to the airport. From that point, however, it should be all maglev. Second, the monorail guideway for maglev will reduce property relocations and condemnations through the city center and make it easier to get by new construction in the Ala Moana area as it extends the system to provide service to east to Waikiki and the Manoa campus of the University of Hawaii. It also will extend west beyond West Kapolei to the Kolina Resort and add a large park and ride lot for Waianae Coast commuters. Third, along with 12 miles of added guideway, there will be new stations and added trains that will provide three minute service during peak hours, a requirement of the 2012 full funding grant agreement that Hart does not intend to meet, instead planning five minute service. The extended system will more than meet the terms for the locally preferred alternative or LPA, also specified by the city council in 2006. The LPA Plus system will provide a huge boost in ridership, a key criterion for the efficiency of rail transit. This letter to me, signed by the, <coughs> pardon me, by the principals of the Maglev 2000 team, expresses their willingness to work with the city and prime contractors to bring 21st century technology to Honolulu. Fourth, along with the enhanced system provided by American Maglev, the real savings will come from life cycle operations and maintenance, something not covered by federal support. The most conservative analysts estimate that maglev O&M costs will be no more than one-third of steel wheels on steel rails costs. This equates to 30-year savings of $2.5 billion with no inflation, ranging to $4 billion at 3%. That is money that can stay in Oahu taxpayers' pockets. I recommended to an unhearing city council that the identification of alternatives be conducted by an independent entity with no connection to the rail project. Perhaps the executor of the independent analysis can be selected by the chair of the U.S. House of Representatives Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. This will avoid any reluctance on the part of the administration or HART to drag their feet on exploring alternatives. Modern technology rail suppliers can make their presentations directly to the House Committee with interested listeners from Hawaii attending. Allowing any city or hard officials to do that exploration would be equivalent to letting the fox guard the hen house. If this exploration is not done, island taxpayers and commuters will never learn whether or not the rail project can be rescued with maglev or other technology and will instead have nothing to look forward to other than probable further delays and increased costs with an obsolescent steel wheel system. Mahalo. Oval Kalelehu Okalani, John Carroll. I'm a long-term resident in the state of Hawaii and very, very proud to say so. I'm also even more proud to say that I'm a member of the Financial Accountability for Rail Grants and Transit for the State of Hawaii Association, excuse me, for the City and County of Honolulu Association. The group has gathered together senior citizens, people with talent, background, and interest, and very, very much at heart, the public interest as this project goes forward. Our President, Roy Nakamura, and the Vice President, Rod Tam, have done a tremendous job and digging up all kinds of information regarding what's happening with the so-called rail project. One of the most intriguing things for me has been the discovery of the Hart Board Minutes, which resulted in, an, uh, in calling for an executive session based upon the fact that there were disagreements as to construction times, periods, liabilities, and, and uh, basically potential criminal liability for members of the Hart Board. From that point on, 
this group has gotten together. They've gone and testified on various aspects, in, in particular uh, this, uh, this Bill 12, which just passed. This is an absolute failure. The only thing that makes any sense to me at this point, after 50 years of the practice of law, is that there be a forensic audit that's going to be ordered by the federal court so that either the council calls for it, the governor calls for it, or the mayor calls for it, but they need to know exactly what's going on, why they're trying to break the promises that were made in the original contract, that there would be no city money used for this, and now Mayor Caldwell is in here in collusion with the council, who very clearly want to, to uh, collude with him to take taxpayers' money from the city uh, taxpayers to pay for this, this operation. This is absolutely dead wrong. I think that the folks in this group are to be commended. I'm very proud to be part of it, and I ask that everyone who's seeing this would try to join our group. We're very active, we're moving forward, and we're all over 35. My <laughs> pleasure to, uh, to speak on behalf of each of us. Mahalo. Mr. Carroll, uh, you said earlier during this testimony, you mentioned Bill 12. Did you mean to say Bill 42? Oh, I'm sorry, Bill 42, yes. Then we, then, then we stand corrected. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Any closing remarks yeah, by I'd anyone? Like Rod? I'd like to close by saying that there are two main focuses of issues here. Number one is the financial accountability of the rail, the city's rail. And that's why we came out with the Association of Financial Accountability for Rail Mass Transit Association. Uh, these people are citizens of the city county of Honolulu, and they all have talents. As you all can see, they are very, very diverse in terms of their occupations. And uh, they really want to live here uh, in a matter of comfort financially. But the city is making it very, very difficult, namely that of the Mayor Kirk Codwell and the heart. Um, prices have gone up. We expect in terms of Bill 42 that property tax will go up. Beyond that, uh, affordability. You're going to find that a lot of senior citizens or others of much younger age will have to sell their home because they can't afford to pay the property tax. We ask that everyone here that listen to us to tell about uh, what we have discussed uh, with your friends, neighbors, relatives, and call upon Mayor Kirk Codwell not to act on Bill 42 and the cashing in on the bonds. This debt bonds, basically. It's not revenue bonds, it's debt bonds, which we all have to pay back. And the mayor wants us to pay more increased property taxes. You know, it's beyond me to understand why the mayor wants to do this. And, uh, you would think in a sensible way that he's a, a political figure, a mayor, who doesn't want to burden the taxation on people. But I guess being that he's a lame duck mayor, he doesn't care anymore. Mm -hmm. So please, call upon the mayor not to enact Bill 42 that we don't need the money. It's a slush fund. We already have the money in the budget of $44 million uh, created by Councilman Ozawa, who put it there. Okay, And he did a respectful job in creating the budget. So there is enough money for the rail at this time. Without commingling without co funds. Property taxes. Right. And city funds. Right. Yeah. Very so, good. I want to thank you very much. And Please feel free to call. You can call me uh, if you want to get hold of me at 216-5454 on behalf of the association. And John? Yeah, I was also going to say that um, if anybody wants to get in touch with anyone in this group, my phone number is 220-9450, uh, and I'll be happy to relay, relay that to Rod and, and to uh, Roy Anakamura. Or anybody else, but I'm so proud to be part of this this group. It's tremendous. So, in closing, in one unified voice, aloha. aloha. <laughs>